Hey, welcome back to Business 150, Introduction to Management. This is now our third video in Module 1, our look at exactly what is management and introduction to the topic as we kick this class off. So, as you can see from this title slide, what we're looking at in this particular video is the topic of resources. What are the kinds or the classes or the categories of resources that organizations use, that managers use, in order to accomplish organizational goals? And we hope that at the end of this video, you will be able to at least do two things. One, define the major categories of resources that managers use and provide examples of resources actual organizations utilize. So not only the broad conceptual categories, but also some actual real life examples. We're going to give you some in this video, and we hope that it will spur your thinking so that when you think of organizations that you encounter, you'll be able to think in those terms of the major categories of resources. So let's jump right in. This is a reminder from our previous uh, lecture, uh, video number two, that we define the management process, the function of management, right? The four functions were planning and decision making, organizing, controlling, and leading. And we said that in order to accomplish the organizational goals, that managers use these four functions along with resources that the organization either has or can get its hands on. Well, what kind of resources are we really talking about? Well, there are four primary classes of resources that every single organization has to some measure. Yes, every organization. Really doesn't matter if you're talking about a for-profit corporation, a nonprofit, a bowling team, any organization you want to talk about will have some level of these four classes of resources. You can see them there. Physical resources, financial resources, information resources and human resources and quite frankly depending on the type of organization that you're talking about and the purposes it's trying to accomplish some of these classes of resources will be far more important than others for instance if you are a company that makes computer products computers and computer parts then the physical resources you have in order to make those components, those physical components, is going to be very, very important to you as an organization, right? Now, it doesn't mean the other categories of resources aren't important, but that will be very important to you, right? Contrast that with a company like Google, which all is all about getting the, the information of the world from the internet and serving it up to users in a way that is easily accessible and understandable, right? Well, for a company like Google, information and human resources will be far more important to that kind of an organization than physical resources, which isn't to say that Google doesn't have a tremendous campus with a bunch of buildings, but I think you know what I'm saying. If push comes to shove, what's the most important thing to Google, a company like that? Information resources and the brilliant minds that shape them, human resources, right? So. As we return to this slide and you look at these four categories of resources, this again, this might be your second tattoo you need to get for this class, right? This is pretty important. You need to understand every organization you're going to interact with is going to have these four classes or categories of resources, physical resources, financial resources, information resources, and human resources. Now, let's give you some examples. Many of us are familiar, of course, here, especially here in Northern California, with the Chevron Corporation, right? They, we know them primarily because that's one of the places we buy gasoline for our automobiles. But think of them as an organization for a moment. You see they're in the table. In order to bring petrochemical uh, products to the marketplace, Chevron needs physical resources, right? Like, you can see them there, oil refineries, international offices, computer infrastructure, right? But Chevron will also need financial resources like investment capital, sales revenue, profits from selling these petroleum products. Chevron will also need informational resources like oil ge geomapping information and data, international reserves contracts and rights in other countries in order to have the right to extract petroleum from some other country's reserves. 
Also, marketing know-how. How is it that Chevron, among all the gas stations out there, seems to consistently be the cleanest and many times the best well-run gas station you're going to find on the freeway, and sometimes the most expensive as well, right? And of course, a company like Chevron will always have human resources, which may take the shape of anything from geological researchers to drilling workers to corporate executives to the people who work in the local gas station. You get the point, right? And so when we talk about a company like Chevron, you can see just some examples of each of these four resource classes that they need to have in order to be successful. Now consider an organization like the College of Marin, where we are actually serving you up this information in this class, right? College of Marin also has physical resources like campus buildings at both our Kent Field and Indian Valley campus, computers and computer infrastructure. Otherwise, you wouldn't have Canvas. You wouldn't be able to log in to Canvas and actually take a look at these videos. As well as things like sports fields, sports facilities, also a library, all sorts of physical resources that a college has. And of course, a college is very, very different than a for-profit corporation like Chevron, right? But we still have financial resources like revenue from the state of California, revenue from your tuition dollar, as well as informational resources like this course content, as well as the know-how, how to present classes that certify for transfer credit when you decide to move on to either a UC or a Cal State system campus for the rest of your four-year education. And finally, human resources like me teaching you, as well as the other staff and administration folks you'll run into just in order to be successful here at College of Marin. This should be an obvious example then, right? That the College of Marin, like the Chevron Corporation in the previous slide, has all four of these resource classes. Let's take a look at one more organization. How about Blue Bottle Coffee? For my money, quite frankly, Blue Bottle may serve up the best cup of coffee in the Bay Area. Consistently, they care about their roast in ways that others do not. They serve up an exemplary cup of coffee if you're truly a coffee lover. You don't like it doctored up with a bunch of milk and sugar and syrup and turn it into something that coffee was never intended to be. Get off my lawn, you darn kids. No, if you're really willing to drink a cup of Joe Black or a double espresso with no sugar, you're going to Blue Bottle Coffee. You may be able to tell I'm pretty passionate about coffee. We can talk about that in another lecture. All right, but back to the slide. Blue Bottle Coffee has physical resources, right? They have roasting machines. They have physical storefronts. Blue Bottle Coffee also has financial resources like sales revenue and investment capital. Blue Bottle Coffee has informational resources like contracts with the plantations where they get coffee beans, as well as individual roasting profiles, how to best serve up the perfect roast, depending on the type of varietal of coffee bean that they're using. And finally, of course, Blue Bottle Coffee has human resources. I just give you two examples here. The barista who actually serves up your espresso to coffee buyers who operate internationally with plantations around the world to actually buy the coffee beans. Now the point here being, of course, we hope that as this video wraps up, you are able to one, define the major categories of resources that managers have at their disposal. What are they again? You remember them, physical resources, financial resources, informational resources, and human resources, and you can provide examples of resources that actual organizations utilize. And we're not just talking about Chevron, College of Marin, and Blue Bottle Coffee, but maybe the very organization that you work at, or that your folks work at, or your friends work at, or some of the organizations and stores that you buy things from. Consider each one of those organizations or companies now knowing what management does and the four major categories of resources that each one of those organizations use. The next time you go to buy a piece of clothing or buy some food, think about what are the physical resources this company has? What are the financial resources this company needs in order to keep growing? What are the informational resources they have that maybe no other organization has in quite the same way? And what about the people? 
What is it about this particular organization that defines how their human resources are perhaps better or worse than other competitors where you might have gone for that same product or service, right? Think along those terms and you'll begin to understand the categories, the broad categories that managers have to think in if they're gonna be successful at managing the organization. The four classes of resources, I hope that's helpful. We'll see you in the next lecture.